Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ryan. I'm excited because today I have a blind here that I, I don't know what any of this is. I don't know if it's bourbon, single malt, scotch, Japanese, Canadian, rice, I, no idea. But these were all sent in from uh, Randy, who's one of our Patreon supporters, member in our Discord, a very generous individual. Thank you so much, Randy. He just said, hey, I'd like to send you a blind. I enjoy watching your blinds and uh, I've got a lineup I think you'd really like. So, boom, this is it. He said, do you want me to tell you anything about it? I said, no. So I have an email that is unopened from Randy and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go through these. He's just labeled them A through D. Boom, A through D. So there's four, I'm gonna pour these and then uh, yeah, we'll just go through it together. And I think what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll let you guys know what they are. So when I edit the video, I'll make sure that on the screen somewhere, it will say what I'm actively tasting. That way, if I'm like, wow, this smells really old and mature and it's a four year old, you can laugh at me. And I'm like getting some great rye notes off this. And you're like, that's totally a bourbon brother. So anyways, for, for posterity, I will uh, go ahead in editing and put those names on there. So you know what I'm tasting as I'm doing it. Thanks again, Randy, I appreciate that. As I'm pouring these, by the way, our Discord and Patreon groups have been doing some really fun stuff. Get in there, at least hop in the Discord so you know what's going on. Totally free, the link to the Discord is in the uh, description of this video. We just hang out, we talk whiskey all the time. It's good stuff. All right, these are all poured. I'm gonna see if I can at least maybe pick up on a theme here. I got my handy dandy notebook. What is this, Blue's Clues? I got my notebook here. I will take notes on each and every one of these as I go through them. I will rank them from best to worst. But for now, my primary goal is to taste them all, nose them all, and then rank them from my favorite to my least favorite today. Let's do it. This is glass letter A. I can tell you that is my first sniff, just that right there. And it smelled like a really good rye, just right off the rip. Man, some white peppercorn, a little bit of a lemon zest in there too. A note of um, pine sap. Any of you guys ever, like when you were a kid, try to climb pine trees? I would climb anything. I'd climb anything at all, pine trees included. And you get covered in that sap, it was real thick. You know what I mean? Super sticky. So you'd smell it on your fingers for the next like 24 hours. I get that on the nose of this, which I, to me, that's a very pleasant note to get. Very crisp, fresh. And I like that lemon zest in there too. A little rind of a lemon. Let's try it. I mean, who are we kidding? That's a rye. That is a rye through and through. It's got a lot of heat, a lot of pepperiness to it. It's really assertive. Up front, I definitely get that strong pine note, first and foremost, alongside dark peppercorns. Yeah, spicy and peppery. Not a lot of that lemon zest note on the palate so far. Let me go in for a second sip. Nope, no lemon zest on the palate, but I do get a little bit of like a, a, a honey note right on the tail end of the palate and going into the finish, which is really oaky. Yeah, some nice tannic oak on the on the uh, finish there for sure. And some sweet honey as it lingers. The more I revisit this, I've had a few sips now. And the more I revisit it, the more sort of the spicy notes, they, they, they kind of come down a little bit. And they give way to things like a little bit of butterscotch in there and some brown sugar. One thing I, uh, I like to do that I picked up from a whiskey writer I like, once you've done the sip and you're letting it kind of sit there on the finish for a while, close your mouth but exhale, like not through your nose, like exhale kind of like through your throat and your chest and make your exhale kind of circulate through your mouth and then out your nose, basically. You're sort of like shoving all the air up into your whole olfactors instead of just like, you know, exhaling through your nose. Try to exhale through your throat with your mouth closed. Almost like you're giving out a long discontented sigh. But that's gonna give you some other notes on the finish that are a little bit more subtle. And when I do that, I get this nice, brown sugar and oak note. Cool, let's move on. I like that. Glass B, not super thick or viscous. The nose is much brighter than the first one already. A note of like stone fruit, smoky mesquite wood actually. This one makes me think of a good Southern barbecue on the nose for some reason, I like that. Yeah, smoky, spicy, and some stone fruit in there for sure. Let's try it. There's a whole lot of oak on that palate. Good seasoned oak on there. While the brown sugar on the first sip was a little more subtle and had to be sort of, you know, peel the layers back to find it. This one, the brown sugar is uh, much more prominent on the palate, but there's this great smoky quality to it. Makes me think of like a, you know, pit smoke. That one's a little bit sweet, but more savory, a little spicy too. As the finish sits there, 
a little bit of cherry on the way on the tail end of that finish. That's got some good character to it. I like that. All right, let's try three. So this is glass C. I can already tell you visually, this one seems much darker. Rolling it around on the glass. It's not leaving like any thick runs coming down the side of the glass. So it's not super oily. First thing I get on the nose of this is freshly baked bread and cinnamon, which makes me think of like a cinnamon roll, but it's kind of hot on the nose too. It's got some heat to it. Yeah, some baked bread, some cinnamon, a little vanilla in there too. Yeah, I think a fresh baked cinnamon roll is really the best way I could describe this nose. And it's, uh, it's beautiful. Love that. All right, let's try it. Oh, wait, well, hold, 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 hold. Cinnamon applesauce. The last, right, I was pulling it away to go in for a sip. I got some of that cinnamon applesauce. All right, now let's try it. Man, that packs a great punch. This is much more assertive than the last two. I would guess proof might be in the 120s for this. There's a lot of dry oak in there, but not like in an unpleasant way. And it's not dominant or overbearing on the other flavors in there either. The baked bread, the cinnamon, all that is still in there. I get like toasted slash burnt caramel. You know what I mean? Like, like if you were to, almost like a brulee effect, you know what I mean? Like brittle, slightly overcooked caramels and sugars. There's a, a, a sweetness in there. I wanted to at first say maple syrupy, but I pivoted because I think it's more molassesy, like a thick and chewy sweetness, you know what I mean? That's darker and richer. That's fantastic. I, I really like this one. I like this one a lot. I think we've either got a rye theme going on or a high rye in the mash thing would be my guess. Let's move on to the final one. Nose on this one is much more chill. The last one was pretty in, in your face. This one's much more, I don't wanna say passive, but it's got manners. The first notes on the nose that I get are fresh roasted peanuts. And this might sound weird, but it's where my head went. A box of matches. Like when you open up, you know, you slide the sleeve off a box of matches. I don't know why, that is exactly where my, no my mind went though <laughs> on the nose of this one. Peanuts, for sure, it's real nutty on the nose. A box of matches. Kind of a wood shop kind of a note on the nose of this one. Like sawdust in the air. Let's try it. Mmm. There's a spice on here that makes me think of red chili peppers. That sawdust in the air note we got on the nose. Totally there on the palate too. I don't know how... That, that, it's not, I don't want to say that it tastes like sawdust. Because that's not really what I'm saying. But that sort of woody, dusty quality that we had on the nose is very present on the palate too. I think orange zest, and there's a bitter component, and the two of those together remind me a lot of an old fashioned, like a traditional old fashioned that uses, you know, like a orange peel garnish, and, and a traditional old fashioned uses both Angostura bitters and orange bitters, like a couple dashes of each. This reminds me of that. There's a great sugar cane sweetness to it too. Man, I got my work cut out for me on this blind in terms of what I like the most, just ranking them. I'll have to do some, I'll do a quick revisit on these and then I'll tell you uh, what my favorites are uh, top to bottom. Or maybe we'll go bottom to top. Build the suspense a bit, you know what I mean? Revisiting one, glass A. I wonder if it's because we've been through so many, but now it's tamed down a bit. It's a lot sweeter on the palate than I remember. That honey note we were getting is definitely more present. Man, this is tough. Okay, so I think I've landed on my, my final placements for these. And in last place, for the record, let me just say, I, I didn't dislike any of these. I enjoyed all of these. I thought these were all very pleasant sips, but for the blind today, my uh, last place is gonna be the first one, glass A. The glass A takes fourth place. That was the one that we said was, um, had some lemon zest, some honey notes in there, some peppercorn. Uh, moving on to uh, third place. Third place is going to be Glass B. This is the one that we said had some uh, smoky mesquite qualities to it. We said some stone fruit, even a little bit of cherry on the finish. That's gonna take third place. Second place today, Glass D. This is the one that we said uh, had some wood shop kind of notes, the sawdust in the air, those qualities. We said peanuts, sugar cane, orange bitters. That was a great sip, I like that a lot. But my first place has to go with Glass C. This is the one that we said we got like cinnamon rolls, cinnamon applesauce on it. 
This one was just so good. Yeah, that's great. Okay. I have now ranked them. Oh, let me... Yeah. I think that shows the depth. Okay, for you. Fourth, third, second, first. Let's open the email. I have not opened this email yet. So I have no idea what's in here, but let's find out. I love all these bottles. You probably have at least two of them. They range from $30 to $100. Ah, yeah, yeah. So the overholt's in here. I told you a rye. What do we have? Okay, so let's go with uh, A. Glass A. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, So glass A was last place. This is uh, Sagamore Straight Rye Whiskey Cask Strength. So this is the Cask Strength Sagamore. I told you I thought that we had a rye thing going on here. So fourth place went to Sagamore Cask Strength. Like I said, I liked all of these sips. I sure did. To glass B, which is Jack Daniels Bonded Rye. You know what? That makes sense. I told you Smoky and Mesquite was, on, was in there. Those are often notes I get on Tennessee whiskeys in general that do the Lincoln County process. So that totally checks out. Jack Daniels Bonded Rye. So fourth place went to Sagamore. I'm actually a little surprised by that. That Sagamore Cask Strength uh got beat by the bonded jack daniels but uh, hey jack daniels is i mean a lot of people are sleeping on jack daniels you shouldn't be uh so he mentioned old overholt in the text so i don't know which one of these is old overholt and, and what the other one is but um third or second place went to glass d which is the old overholt so old overholt took second place here um, yeah, which I said was phenomenal. I said, it gave you, that makes sense. Cause I said, peanuts, peanuts is something you often get on a, um, on a Jim Beam product in general, their distillate. I think it has a lot to do with the, uh, the yeast strains that, that, that they use in house that they cultivate themselves. I think that's why we tend to get a lot of uh, peanutty notes off of, uh, their distillate. I said, uh, sugar cane wood shop. Yeah, that all tracks that checks out. Hey, that is a great bottle. Old overholt. 10 year this that took second place tonight i adore this bottle by the way you ever see this on a shelf you gotta grab that because that stuff is delicious so now you got me curious randy what took first place over overholt because so far overholt has won uh anytime i've stacked it up against other rise even in a blind overholt has won so i'm curious to see what was better here we go. Glass C is... You did not. You sent me a sample of that, dude. That's so hard to find. That's Thomas H. Handy. That's b -Tac. That is straight rye whiskey from Buffalo Trace, the b -Tac collection. Antique. Well, that's a little repetitive, isn't it? The Antique Collection Collection. That's the Thomas H. Handy Sazerac straight rye whiskey dang dude dang well i'm i'm kind of glad that that won because honestly i have never had a pour of handy in my life never uh so you that's that's my first that's the first time i've ever had handy in my life and it won the rye blind and i guess that goes to show you why it's such a sought after rye whiskey I knew we had a rye thing going on, but I did not know that you were gonna up the stakes like that. <laughs> uh, but no shocker that that and the Overholt took first and second. No shocker to me uh, for my palate. But hey, thank you so much for sharing some handy with me. I, I can't help but feel like the phrasing on that sounds a little risque. <laughs> I'll never forget the day Randy gave me a little handy. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Demonetized. Hey, but that right there is the rye blind. Thank you so much, Randy, for sharing those with me. Man, that is an incredible sip. I'm jealous of your bottle there, dude. Especially, hey, thank you so much for sharing that with me. I can see in the picture that it's down to 40%. Got about 40% left in there. So the fact that you would share some of that with me, uh, that means a lot to me. It's very generous to you. Thank you so much, brother. I appreciate it. Hey, if you enjoyed this, let me know by leaving a like on the video. And uh, for sure, 
definitely check out our Discord. We've got, Randy's one of the guys that's in there. This is the kind of stuff they do. Wonderful people, get in there. And um, a lot of guys will ask, hey, I'm about to buy this bottle. Is this something I should pull the trigger on? Is this rare? Is this good? Am I being upsold? Is this a good price? All that kind of stuff. Use our Discord as a resource when it comes to uh, knowing what whiskeys you wanna buy and try. Also, we've had people who are like, I see that I'm tuned into the Discord, even if I'm not talking all the time in there, I'm seeing everything that's going on in there. And sometimes people are like, I'd really like to try this thing, but I've never found it. And I'm not sure if I want to pay the secondary price to get it. And then there's another person in the Discord that has that bottle. And it's like, hey, I'll send you a sample. I'll send you a sample this week and you can try it and see if you like it. That's just, that's what I love about the whiskey community as a whole. Like people love this craft. They love this hobby and they love to share it with other people. And that's really where the fun of it is, is, and even to a certain extent, flexing it, being like, I got that bottle. I got that bottle, I'll share some of that bottle with you. I mean, some, sometimes it is a bit of a flex, but it's a generous flex, you know what I mean? It's not I have it and you don't, it's I have it, you gotta try it. I love that about our community. So let's grab the handy and let's say, cheers, my friends. May you live richly and get better with age. Be warm and well-fed, and I hope to catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.